All right, well, welcome. Um, we're here today to talk a little bit about whiteboards with Cynthia and Nell. This is our, our first attempt at a vlog. Um, so Cynthia, I know you're our math expert, and as that, you have been using whiteboards a lot, even in person. And now that we're moving to teaching from a distance, um, it seems like a really hot topic for a lot of teachers to figure out how to move that kind of work onto a distance learning platform. So can you tell us a little bit about the um, different whiteboard apps you've found and why you like them? Sure. Um, so most of us are somewhat familiar with the whiteboard that is in Zoom. Uh, Zoom does offer a whiteboard. If you weren't aware of that, you can share your screen. Um, and when you click on share your screen, you have a little dialog box that opens up and you get to choose what you're sharing. And there is a whiteboard tool that you could share. And that is one of the most basic whiteboards that you can share. It looks like this. And uh, you can write on it, as you can see here, you can type text in it like that. Uh, students can annotate on it as well, which may be a good thing, may not be a good thing. So there is a setting that you can choose to stop students from writing on it. Um, and then of course you can clear it, you can clear all drawings, and you can also save the whiteboard. So if that's something that needs to happen, you can do that as well. But this is pretty much a basic whiteboard experience. Um, I, I have seen some teachers who will take some text from a Word document and copy and paste that text into the text box on the whiteboard so that the students can see what they're doing. But that also feels a little redundant because you could just share the Word document instead of the whiteboard. Um, and there are some drawbacks to this as to pretty much every whiteboard. It's a little difficult to write with if all you have is your mouse. If you're trying to write numbers, you kind of have to have like a really steady hand. Um, and it's not necessarily easy to do if all you have is a mouse. Um, in general, I recommend having some kind of writing pad uh, for teachers, particularly who are going to be teaching math and using whiteboards, just to make it a little bit more clean. But that's pretty much the basic level whiteboard in Zoom. So I'd recommend that if that's pretty much all you want to have happen, which is for students just to see whatever it is that you're trying to put on your screen. And again, Cynthia, you said that whiteboard shows up when you share your screen, it's an option. Um, so it's not an add on or anything like that. It just it's part of your, but there are settings right in the um, In the browser version of uh, Zoom, you can put in some settings around security issues around the annotation and stuff like that. Yes, you want to make sure if you don't want students writing on your screen, you want to make sure you go into the settings and uh, have them if you're the host have them not uh, annotate. You want to turn that off so that they won't be writing on the screen with you. Because uh, as you can see here, it says clear viewers drawing. So that means other people who are viewing can write on it right now because the annotation is on. All righty. So, so if we're not using this one, yeah. What would, what, no, I was just going to ask you, so what are your discoveries if you're not using, I mean, th like you said, this is the basic, this is available with Zoom. Um, but it has its struggles. So what, what other apps have you found that you like? Okay, so there are other apps that I prefer to use for whiteboard because they more so mimic what would happen in the classroom, right? Um, depending on what I want to have happen in the lesson, if you want collaborative learning, if you want students to work on a same um, project or board together, I prefer and I recommend the AWW app. So I'm going to share my screen and show you that one. It's called uh, AWW, which means a whiteboard, right? Um, and they have a basic version. I'm actually using the basic version right now. I'm logged in. As you can see, my name is here. The basic version does come with ads on the bottom, and that's a little annoying. Um, and this one I like just because it allows for the collaborative learning. As you can see, I can invite students to work on the whiteboard with me, or I can create whiteboards for them to work on collaboratively together. So if I was using the breakout rooms and I sent three students to each breakout room, I would assign each breakout room 
one of these whiteboards. And now they're all in their breakout room working on the same whiteboard together. And it's, it's a lot like Google Drive, right? Like how you could share with the Google Drive. So with this one, I could say anyone who has this link can edit this particular board. Or I could say, I only want people to view this board. Um, or I could share a copy for each user. I love this one, this option, because now I have, when I send you that link, it creates your own whiteboard based off of my whiteboard. So now not everyone's writing on the same whiteboard, kind of like what happens in Google Classroom sometimes where you set it up so that every student has the same document, but it creates a copy for them and only them. So I really like this app. As you can see, you can share with the link or you can share with the QR code. So it's just a really good way to encourage collaboration amongst the students. And then it has the same kind of basic tools. Uh, you can change your font color. You can write with a pen. You can highlight. Um, you can erase. You can draw tools. So this is somewhat helpful. You, will, you can draw shapes, uh, but pretty much only rectangles and circles. You can insert text just like on the whiteboard on Zoom. But this one I like, it has little post-its. So this is, you know, this might be really good for all of my ELA teachers. We always want our students to annotate, you know, certain texts or what have you. So you can create lots of different post-its and you can create different boards. I've actually seen some really interesting boards where it was full of different post-its for under columns and everything like that. So it was a really interesting uh, whiteboard tool that works well for collaboration. If collaboration is what you want, AWW is it. Beautiful. And you said this was a uh, free account that you can also pay and have something more or get rid of the ads and things? Yes. So this is the free account. Um, it gives you, you see this plus sign here. This is how many pages of my whiteboard I can make. But if I have the premium account, the premium account is $9 a month. And one, it gets rid of the ads. So no more ads on the bottom down here. And two, the premium account actually allows me to fully integrate this app with my Google Classroom. So if I'm using Google Classroom and I created assignments and I wanted the students to do their work on this app, I want this app to be integrated with the assignment in Google Classroom. So if I had the free, if I had the premium version, it allows me to fully integrate like this board into Google Classroom. I could upload it completely into Google Classroom with the assignment and all the students would have it. That's why the beauty of, there's the beauty of the share, share a copy for each user. Because if I upload it, if I created an assignment on this whiteboard and I uploaded it into Google Classroom, I wouldn't want every student going and writing on this whiteboard. So I'd use this link here, share a copy for each user. So now when every student goes into Google Classroom, and they click on it, they're going to have a copy of the whiteboard and it makes it easier for me to see. Another really great tool with this is that, particularly with the premium, it allows me to see what the students are doing in real time. Um, so I can actually see what the students are doing on this board. I would go to assignments. I'm using the free version right now, but if we were looking at the premium version, I'd see an option over here for me to look at assignments and an assignment board would pop up and I could click on that and it would show me every live screen that is happening. So if I were in my breakout rooms, I could actually, if I had four breakout rooms, I'd see on my screen four live screens and it's live. So every writing or annotation or whatever they're doing on it, I will see live. So I could actually click on that screen and participate with them, which I really love that. It's really collaborative right there. I can give them feedback in real time. And that's under assignments. And assignments is something that you get in the premium version as well. And as I said, the premium version is $9 a month. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> so you said this is really excellent for collaboration and you can see all the great examples of both how students can collaborate, but you then as a teacher can come in and also work with them. Um, what other whiteboard apps have you come across? Okay, so this one takes it up a little bit of a notch from AWW, which allows for them to work together for me to create assignments in Google Classroom, but it's still missing a couple of things for me, particularly as a math teacher. 
Um, it still makes it a little challenging for me to do math symbols and equations um, for students to be able to see unless I write them. So I really like the tool Explain Everything. Uh, I was using it a long time ago and learned so many new tools that I totally forgot about it, uh, but it's still just as good and it's even better now because they've made some updates. So I'm gonna share my screen for that one. Um, so this is actually what my, this is my uh, explain everything here. As you can see, I could create a new project. I already have one project. I just created one as an example so that you could see that it allows me to um, write equations. It's looking for the eraser. And the beautiful part about this, as you can see, it allows me to record. I could actually make videos for my students to watch from my explain everything or my students can make videos they can join with their microphone so while they're doing their work they can also leave audio that's attached to it which i absolutely love um, so as you can see here i can click record and it would record what i'm doing here for students this is a great way for them to show both both visually and audially if that's a word i don't think that's a word um what they're what they're doing as you can see here i, I made an example of an equation uh, the other apps that i've come across do not give me that option here so i can type in as you saw here four and then i need the superscript for me to make uh, a cube that gives me the ability to do that it also has the subscript for me to be able to do that and it just makes math so much easier and the other apps that i shared uh, when it comes to shapes as you saw in aww it pretty much only gave me rectangle or circle here i get so many more options when it comes to drawing the shapes uh, i've got square i've got rounded edges i've got circle but i've also got the line so this was me trying to draw a parallelogram so if i wanted to finish my parallelogram it's not the best parallelogram but i'm able to draw a parallelogram and then i'm able to write the sides next to it um, and write the measurements for it uh, so i really like this app and it has the same capabilities where i can as you can see i can invite students so we can collaborate on it together anyone with the link can edit or i could just give them the code for it and that will take them to this board um, and they can uh, work on it together this one is actually a little bit cheaper. This is the free version, but the premium version is $6.99. And the premium version gives me the ability to voice chat as well. So I could voice chat with you. If I'm watching you in real time, I can just voice chat instead of type chat with you. Um, and it gives me access to a repository, which is the thing I like most about this. If I don't feel like creating my own board, I could actually go to a list of projects as you can see here, these are all the explain everything that other people have created and chosen to share. So I could just go and find a topic um, and click on that topic and that explain everything is already there and I can just watch it or I could share it with my students for them to watch. So I don't have to recreate everything. And as you can see, they have lots of categories, entertainment, coding, ELA, reading, writing, science. So I feel like this is like the best of both worlds. I can create my, my whiteboard, my students can create it, but my students can also create their own explain everythings. They can watch other explain everythings. They can share those explain everythings. And it's pretty user friendly. It's designed specifically for tablets, iPads, and phones. I've actually created a explain everything using an iPad, and then I uploaded it to YouTube. So this is an explain everything. As you can see, it says explain the three laws. I did this video using explain everything on an iPad. So it's pretty cool. Um, and it's $2 less than the other app, which I, I love <laughs> that price. And I heard you say, so this is, so with, with Explained Everything, it comes as an app that can be used on various mobile devices, both phones and uh, tablets. Was that true of the other whiteboard app, the, the, the AAW? 
Uh, that's a good question. I actually never looked to see if they have an app for that. We could look to see, but I know they have an app for Explain Everything because I used it on an iPad. Um, let's see. And have you used in Zoom the whiteboard um, on, or had folks using the whiteboard from Zoom on their smartphones? Because I guess I think a lot of teachers are probably mostly working with students who are using a lot of smartphones. So you're saying yes. That, yes, it is possible. It, you know, it doesn't look as great visually, right? Especially if your screen is not very large, but it is great, uh, particularly for me, because I have a pen that goes with my phone. So it makes it easier for me to actually write. Remember we were talking about it's hard to write with the mouse. So it's actually easier for me to use the whiteboard on my phone in Zoom than it is on my desktop. And maybe other people, maybe your phone doesn't have a pen like this, but you have a stylus, mm -hmm. right? So it's easier to write on the whiteboard on your mobile device than it is in the desktop or laptop, unless you have one of those writing pads that I mentioned earlier. But the whiteboard is accessible in the Zoom app for mobile Great. devices. Great, excellent. So we've talked about the Zoom whiteboard, we've talked about AWW, and now explain everything. And I love that thing about the being able to record audio, both for the learner to be describing their process, but then for you as a teacher to you know, make a demonstration or something that people can watch whenever they want. So that's super exciting. Yes, I actually like that one better. I know a lot of times, sometimes we're, you know, like recording in Zoom or we're teaching people how to add audio to PowerPoint, um, but explain everything, has the whiteboard, I could upload the PowerPoint, I could upload a document, I could write on it and just record my audio all at the same time. So it's pretty much like these three tools all at one point and then it's easily shared. I easily uploaded it to YouTube. As you can see, it stays there in the cloud. So I could just give anyone that link and say, go watch this video. Um, and I think that's actually where a lot of the Khan Academy videos come from. Yeah. You can explain you, everything. Um, um, just the voice. Got it. If a student was going to be using any, either a AWW or um, explain everything, do they need to create accounts? Good question. Nope, they just need the link, or as you saw on Explain Everything, they could use the code. Okay. So AWW, you could access it with a QR code or a link, um, or on the Google Classroom, right. or in Explain Everything, I could put in the class code and that would take me to it, or I could get the link and that would take me to it. But both Explain Everything and AWW allow for collaboration. Students can, participate and annotate and write and draw on the whiteboard if you give them access, right? You can you can say view only or you can say, no, I want students to be able to collaborate and write on it. Excellent. Um, so do you, and I know we, we haven't, we've talked mostly from the math perspective. I know you also mentioned ELA there with the, with the post-it notes. Um, and I know we have some colleagues who've been working using uh, whiteboards both for science and for ESL. Um, but as you point out, sometimes those, the uses can be done using other tools like uh, Word document or something like that. Do you have other whiteboards or were those your key ones? I do have one more, but now that I've given you all like my super collaborative <laughs> ones, this one's going to feel so unappealing. But it's the one that I enjoy the most as a teacher, uh, just because I like all of the bells and whistles. Um, as, I, as far as instructional purposes, it is not collaborative at all. So if I'm just now down to the nitty gritty, I have some instruction that I need to get there and it needs to be visual. I like this whiteboard app. So I'm going to share my screen again. It's this one, classroom screen. In fact, this is actually more so for those teachers who have smart boards in their classrooms. Instead of just having the blank canvas smart board, if you were to use this screen, it's so much more rich. Um, so I kind of just try to pretend like my computer is now my smart board if I'm doing just down and dirty instruction. I actually don't really like the new one. I prefer to use the classroom, uh, I mean the classic. So I use the classic one and it will load like this. And it's basically like a smart board um, where I would be doing work for my students to see. As you can see, I can create text. 
Um, I like this one because once again, it's for all those instructional purposes. I've got a timer that's here. So I'm saying, okay, I, I want you, I'm going to do this assignment that's here on the board and I want you to have five minutes to do it. The students can see that their five minutes, they see their five minutes is running out. They can, uh, it'll leave a little like um, ditty, like it'll do, 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 do when the five minutes is up. Um, I like that I can keep my clock there. I, I like these tools here as far as if I need them to work together, if I want them to work silently. This is more so for if we were in the actual classroom space, that way they'd know how I wanted them to work. Um, I can include sound. I do like that. I can change the background. Um, sometimes I actually have like uploaded uh, the image of the shape, right? If I'm working on irregular figures, I've uploaded the image of that shape and that is the background and then I'm writing on it. So you can upload the background. I like that it has a randomizer, uh, right, to help me call on students, right? I could put the students' names in there and it will randomize uh, how they're called on or you can use a dice, uh, you know, like if you're number four and the four comes up, then that means you're the one who's gonna answer my question. Um, and you have the options obviously for writing. I can write on it and you can choose your text and you can upload a photo, I mean, um, a document, if I can get this thing to go away, you can upload a document and write on that as well. So I just like this one. As I said, it's pretty much for instructional purposes. It has no collaborative nature at all, but I do like the polling option here. I can actually create a poll, right? So this could be a great formative assessment or summative assessment tool. This is the example to come up, what did you think of today's lesson? But I could change it, you know, did you understand um, systems of equations? Um, and then you can change the options and the students will vote real time and I can see that I need to go over systems of equations or what particular thing about systems of equations did you not understand and they can respond in the chat. Uh, so this one is one that I prefer if I'm not doing any kind of collaborative, if I really need to just like demonstrate here's how you do something um, or I put an assignment on there and I want them to know how much time they have. I just, I really like this timer option because sometimes we say you have five minutes, but no one's really keeping track of the five minutes, which, you know, in our classroom, we might've used, I used to use Google. I would go to Google and put in timer and the timer would just go on the screen. Well, now they can see the timer is on the screen. And that's my last uh, whiteboard tool. Any questions about that one? Um, no, again, do you know if it comes as an app or if it's just a, uh, a Good question, though. That's okay. <laughs> I, don't we can... I, don't, I don't think it would make sense for it to come as an app because this one is classroom. This one's really for classrooms. Yes. Um, but I don't, I don't know. Got it. Well, we're going to add the links to the bottom in the YouTube video so you guys can look down below and we'll show you the links out to the websites as well as to apps if they exist. I guess I had one question in thinking about using whiteboards, right? So again, I know we're focusing on math here. Um, when we are talking to teachers, sometimes I feel like part of the process is to think a little bit about what you want to have happen, like your objectives. And I heard you say the big difference between the collaborative one versus more of an instructional one. What, again, I'm, I think teachers do that kind of thinking uh, when we were meeting face to face. And now I'm seeing a little bit when we're at a distance, there's sometimes not that thinking. But what would be your thinking to determine whether you wanted it to be more collaborative or more of an instructional uh, use? Good question. Um, I think it would just, it would be exactly that. Firstly, I always think about what's my learning goal, right? If I'm after students understanding something or with students practicing procedural fluency, then that's going to determine what kind of whiteboard I use. Um, if I'm after them reasoning and um, looking at other people's reasoning, then I'm definitely going to want the collaborative boards. If I want them sharing their work together, um, then I'm definitely going to use the collaborative boards. But if it's just a matter of I want them looking at uh, a particular, like if I'm looking at a graph, then I would definitely have that one probably on the classroom screen and then having them respond using Padlet perhaps. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the collaborative boards for something like that, right? Because I don't want to overwhelm them. I would only go to the AWW if it's, for me, how I think about it, AWW works best if I'm doing breakout rooms. So if I'm writing my lesson and I know I'm about to do a breakout room because I want them working on something together, then I'm probably going to reach for the AWW app. 
um, depending on what they're doing in the breakout room now, right? If I want them on that breakout room because I want them doing the math together, I want them looking at and solving something together, then I'm going to send them to that breakout room with that particular AWW. Because as we saw, you can create separate boards. So I give them the link for that board. They go in their breakout room and they use that one. Um, but if I want them to actually fully show their understanding, maybe like even like some kind of summative assessment assignment, I'm probably going to reach for explain everything because I want to hear what they have to say. If, it's, if I want them to go in that breakout room, I'm going to go in 20 minutes and I want them to make a presentation, some kind of presentation that explains that they understand how to solve this problem, that they're going to talk their way through it. You know, we, we have that recording uh, function and explain everything and they would record it and they'd share it. Um, so I, I think it depends on, like you said, what my learning goal is. So for those three uh, different learning goals, I'd use each one of those uh, applications. Also, AWW, if I really want to see what they're doing, I'd probably reach for AWW too because we saw that I have the ability to live look in on everybody's screen. I can clearly see what they're doing. So maybe that's, you know, if we're in the breakout rooms and I join breakout room one, but I'm monitoring the boards and I see breakout room four has nothing, I'm gonna leave breakout room one and go into breakout room four because I was able to see it. I'm able to see all of the breakout, all of the boards that the students are doing. So I just, when I think breakout rooms, I think AWW, unless there's some kind of formal presentation that I want to have, then I'll kick it up to explain everything. Beautiful. And again, you know, we are mostly concentrating on math, but it seems like there's definite uses for all of these tools um, for other types of instruction. And I think this key of the visual, I know with our Zoom meetings now, there's a lot of face-to-face -face talking, but that opportunity for students to stay together synchronously, but still go off and work on something where they're looking at the same image together and doing work, that seems like a really, really valuable tool. So thank you everybody for, for uh, watching our vlog on uh, whiteboards. Um, feel free to contact us if you have additional questions um, and we're just really happy to, to see you here today. Thank you and don't forget the links for these three uh, whiteboards will be in the description box below. So make sure you check out the description box um, so that you can access them. And all of them have free versions, but you know, if you take it up to the premium, then you get more. Fabulous. Thank you so much, Cynthia. I'm Nell. Good to see you all. Take care.